Okay, here's a couple more graphs. Um, this is a square root. Do you remember what the parent function to a square root graph looks like? It's kind of an ugly x and y axis, but that's good enough for now. Looks like this. Remember, if it was just y equals the square root, I'll tell you what, let's move that over to about right here. What if it was just y equals the square root of x? You didn't have the plus 2 in here. Well, put a 0 in for x, it's 0. The y would be 0, because the square root of 0 is 0. Put a 1 in for x. If you put a 1 in for x, so x is equal to 1, what's y going to be? It's the square root of 1, which is 1. And what is, uh, put a 2 in, you can take the square root of 2, but that doesn't come out even. You could just, you could plot it if you want, but let's put a 4 in there. So there's a 1, 2, 3, 4. Put a 4 in there, what do you get? That's 1. Square root of 4 is 2, just like that. So, oops, it looks, it curves, and it continues like that. So that's the basic look of a square root graph. What is the minus 2, or the, sorry, it's a plus, isn't it? It's a plus 2. What does the plus 2 do to this? It moves it to the left two places. So what I'm going to do, instead of right here, I'm going to move it to the left two places, 1, 2. All right? So it's not going to hit the origin this time. It's going to hit at negative 2, 0. And what does it do? You went to the right, you went up 1. You went to the, sorry, you went to the right 1 place, you go up 1. You went to the right 4 places, you go up 2. And that's exactly what we're going to do right here. So let's, um, let's put a couple more points in here. All right, so it's going to be right here. And then if we go to the right 1, you go up 1. If you go to the right 4, you go up 2. And you could do this all day if you wanted, wanted to, if you, um, 3, 9, and so forth, but watch. Actually, not 3, 9. If you go over 9, you go up 3. But we're not going to go that far. This is good enough. Now, it kind of looks like a straight line, but it's not. You know it's a curve. It starts here, hits here, it curves, and it just keeps on going. So the further out you go, the higher up it goes. Um, and that should have hit right on there. And that's what it looks like. Okay, it looks just like this, except you just pushed it over two places to the left. Let's do this one right here. This has got a squared right here. Should the parent function is just y equals x squared. It's doing a few other things to it, but you should know what that basic parent function looks like. And all these graphs are based on you knowing what the parent function looks like. And uh, what does it look like? Well, if I put a 0 in for x, this, uh, as 0 squared is 0, so my point is 0, 0. Put a 1 in for x, 1 squared is 1, so if I put a 1, I get a 1. Put in a 2, 2 squared is 4, so I go up to 4. I don't need any more than that, I get the basic idea. It goes up like this, should curve a little bit more, and it goes up like that. That's your basic squared function. It's a parabola. Not the prettiest parabola I've ever seen, but that's a parabola. So what does this stuff do? What does that minus 1 do to this parabola? Well, it moves it to the right one place. What is the minus 3? That moves it up and down. It's minus, so it moves it down three places. So it looks just like this, except we move it to the right once, and we move it down three places. Let's put that point on there. That's our vertex to our parabola. So we move it to the right one place, and we move it down three. One, two, three. So our vertex is going to be here. So instead of at the origin, the way it was here, now it's going to be down here like this. And we're going to move it to the right. I'm sorry, yeah. Oh, we already did it. Move it to the right once and down three places. Now, what did we do? We went over one, up one. We went over two, up four. So let's put a few points in here. So watch this. One, two, three, four. Good. Okay, so we went. if we move it over one, we go up one. If we moved it over two, we go up four. One, two, three, four. If we, and the same thing with to the left. If I move it to the left, I go up one. If I move it to the, sorry, if I move it to the left once, I go up one. If I move it to the left twice, I go up four. It's symmetric to the other side. And there's, you start seeing the shape of our parabola. Again, I'm not, oops, a little squiggly on this. That side wasn't too bad. And there's our parabola. Okay, if we remember uh, the parent function for the cubed, let's just sketch that out. That's a pretty lousy straight line. Let me try a little bit better. <laughs> okay, it's a little bit better. And that's pretty bad, but you'll get the idea. The uh, cube function looks like this. It goes up like that, and it goes down like that. Remember, if you go over 1, that's 1 for the x. Remember, we're just doing the parent function right here. So if it was y equals x cubed, you put a 1 in for the x, you go up 1. You put a 2 in, you go up how much? 8, because it's 2 cubed. And it does the same thing on the opposite side. If I put a negative 1, I get a negative 1. 
negative 1 in for x, I get a negative 1 in for y. Put a negative 2 in for x, I get a negative 8 for y. All right, so that's the basic shape of it. But really, what's the only difference between this and this right here? It's just we took this graph right here, and we just shifted it down five places. So let's go down five places. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. And that's where it's going to be. So we didn't move it left and right or anything because you didn't change this function. You didn't change this x. You only changed the uh, whole entire uh, translation up and down, which is a negative 5. So let's do this. Let's start right here now. All right. So this is where we're going to start. And what do we do here? We went over 1, up 1. So let's do this. Put a couple here. Let's see. What was that? That was 5, 6, 7, 8. Okay. So we go to the right one. We go up 1. And then what we do? We went over 2 and up 8. So look, we go over 2 and up 8. So it looks something like this. All right. Whoops. Anyway, that was supposed to go nice and smooth through there. It's the same thing over here. Um, this is a sketch, remember, it doesn't have to be perfect. So I'm going to go start here and go to the left one and down one, like this. And really, if you don't have any room down here, uh, that's fine. You can just kind of give me the basic idea of what it's going to look like. And it'll look something like that. All right, there we go. My hand's not quite so steady with this tablet that I'm using. But that's the basic shape. It looks like this. We just, we just took the thing and we just shifted it down. That's all there is to that. Let's go to this one right here. Now, this is the craziest looking one of them all. This is an inverse function. Now, again, if you remember the basic inverse function, it looks something like this. If I put, let's just, 1 equals, or y equals 1 over x. So if I uh, put a 0 in there, if I put a 0 in for x, look what happens. 1 over 0, it's 1 over 0, it's undefined. Sometimes we put a dotted line here. We call that the asymptote. So we can't go through this. So let's put a 1 in for x. Let's put a 1 in for x. What is y? Well, 1 over 1 is 1. So 1, 1 is a good point right here. Let's put a 2 in for x. 1 over 2 is a half. So if I put a 2 in, I only go up a half. Let's put a half in for x. 1 divided by a half is 2. So if I go over a half, I'm going to go up 2. I'm doing this very, very quickly because we've talked about this in class before. This is just review. So that's what it's going to look like here. And it's going to do the same thing down in this quadrant. Again, you can put the points in if you would like just to verify that this looks right. There we go. Now look, this gets really close to the y-axis, never touches. This one right here gets really close to the y-axis, never touches. This one gets close to the x-axis, and so does this, but never touches. That's your basic shape. So what's going on here? We're changing the x value, okay? We're changing uh, this part of the function itself. So this means we move it to the left. This moves it left and right. We move this to the left uh, three places. So it looks just like this, except we pick everything up and move it to the left three places. So our asymptote is right here. It's the y-axis. Um, so what we're going to do is going to move that over three places, and now it's going to be right here. All right, so I'm going to start with that. Now look what we did here. We went over one, and we went up one. Let's put a point here. Let's put a couple over here. So if we go over one, we went up one. Remember, this is just a sketch. It doesn't have to be perfect. So what's the basic shape of it? Well, it goes like this. It's, these don't take too long at all. They don't have to be perfect. I just want to see some basic points. I want to see this point, I want to see where the asymptote is, and I want to see the other part as well. So if we go to the left one, we go down one, which would be here, and it curves really close to that asymptote, and it comes up really close to the x-axis. That's what it looks like. It looks exactly like this, except we just picked it up. We moved it to the left three places. That's all that thing right there tells you to do.